morning. This is the answer today. I am Chris Ryan. This hour, this year brought to you by New England College and NEC.edu. Excited with us in studio, Ambassador Nikki Haley, candidate for president and governor Chris Noon. Of course, the announcement yesterday that uh, the governor will be supporting Ambassador Haley. And uh, welcome to both of you this morning. Great to have you in studio. Thanks. Thank it's you. a great day in New Hampshire. I didn't put a suit coat on for y'all. You dressed up day. for us. It's a big day. Uh, so, no, no t-shirt and gym shorts for Chris <laughs> The pajamas outfit was out. We're, we're going to get dressed up today. So um, Ambassador Haley, we'll start with you know what this, what this means. Does this change your expectations for New Hampshire? Is this a state that you now want to and feel you can win? I always wanted to win this and I always felt like I had to earn every single person's vote and that's why we've worked hard and we're not going to stop working hard i think that's really important it's been a good couple of weeks last week we won um the most conservative freedom loving grassroots organization endorsement americans for prosperity this week we we win the live free or die governor it doesn't get any better than that and so now we're just going to go and try and make it a live free or die country i think it's time we do that how big of a factor was the work that that uh, ambassador haley has put in and her ability to connect with voters when it came to, and obviously, where she's polling and has a chance to have success. How big a factor was that? Well, it's the work. Yeah, yeah, just like you said, it's all about the work. If you're putting in the work and you're you're spending time with the citizens and you're listening to the questions, and after a long day, you're willing to listen to more because you understand the value of those stories, right? I always talk about the value as a governor. I think Governor Haley gets it. The value of someone else's story to say, oh, wait, this is the priority. This is the barrier in the system. This is where things are breaking down. You don't, you don't know that by sitting in the corner office or, or sitting in the White House. You don't know that. But to have a president that actually connects with folks on that individual level. Um, and the, the other thing that I, in the past three or four weeks, the feedback I was getting from other folks saying she's the real deal. Like I've known her for a long time. We've been friends, and of course, but people started seeing what I what I have have known for a long time. She's the real deal. She's not just talking at thirty thousand feet. She's talking about real issues, and most importantly, listening about how to how to bring real solutions and the appreciation of our process here. Where um, look, the message I have is is quite simple. You know, Republicans can vote, undeclared can vote, even some conservative Democrats might come over. Great, bring them all. If everybody votes, who's eligible to vote? Nikki Haley is going to win in a landslide in New Hampshire, and that will be a fundamental transformation, not just for New Hampshire, for the country, right? So everyone you know, that, that has the power to make the change can make it. Just all, all we ask is everyone show up. Everybody show up. Whoever you think you might vote for, show up on, on Election Day. Um, and again, sh- let's show this country that New Hampshire is, you know, has earned that first of the nation primary status because you know, we ask the candidates to connect with individuals. And, Nikki's done a phenomenal job of it. And you know, one thing I'll say is <clears> – <throat> What does it mean if New Hampshire does that? Think about the fact that in all the general election polls, you've got Trump and Biden. They're pretty much head to head. On a good day, Trump will be up to maybe four within the margin of error. The Wall Street Journal did a poll, and we've had many more that have shown the same thing. I defeat Biden by 17 points. Do you know what that does? That makes it not just about a presidency. That makes it about... Us having a mandate on economic policy and paying down our debt and cutting taxes and getting our economic situation back on track. That's a mandate to get our kids reading again and getting our schools back to the basics and putting parents in charge. That's a mandate to close our border finally once and for all. That's a mandate to get crime down and start having the backs of our law enforcement. That's a mandate to prevent wars and make an America strong again. That's what we're trying to do is say this is the time to make a shift. Let's cut out the chaos and let's start focusing on how we get our country back on track. And I think, you know, the, the larger point is in regard to a, a Trump-Biden rematch. And we've all talked about this, you know, 70, 75 percent don't want to see it. They want to see a new leader. And New Hampshire has an opportunity not just to complain about that, but to do something about that. And, you know, there it is you know, fairly clear at this point in time, given your, your polling and how you're connecting with, with voters, that's... Um, voters see you as perhaps the only thing that stands in between that. Um, how important is getting out, you know, that message to people that may not even be thinking about this race at this point? The low information voters, the independent voters who are not engaged that New Hampshire has an opportunity to change the trajectory of the national race by, um, having a candidate that defeats Trump. 
governor. Yeah, so look, um, it, there are a couple of fo- couple different types of voters out there. There are voters that just want to see Trump off off the ballot, and they're all going to come out. A lot of them with Chris Christie right now. They're all coming over. There's no doubt. This is the path. Chris is a great governor, did a great job, t- speaks his truth. God bless it. I love it. Um, Do you um, want him to get out of the race? But, what's that? Do you want him to get out of the race? Uh, look, Chris will make that decision for himself and all that. Uh, at but some you point, said he wanted, you know, other people like Burgum. Oh, and, obviously and I want everyone to consolidate Vivek around Nikki Haley. There's okay. no doubt about right. that. But I'm not going to tell. I mean, at this point, I'm not going to tell him to get out of the race. I, it, I think the voters are going to come. I think they're going to see, see that, that this is a clear path. There are a lot of voters that say, hey, the former, we were with President Trump in 16. We were with him in 20, as Nikki and I were, right? Thank you for your service. But with all the chaos and drama, Families need a president that can focus on inflation 120 percent of the time. They, we need a president that can focus on national security and the border 120 percent of the time and not get distracted by the drama. You have to get results. And so what's the point of, of, of getting behind Trump and even getting him elected if there's just no way he's going get, to get the results that we need? So the opportunity to move forward – and let's just talk about the background. You have a, a governor in Nikki Haley that apps turned around. South Carolina was in trouble before Nikki Haley, the Tea Party candidate, right? In 2010, she comes along, turns the entire state around with manufacturing and jobs and the economy. She does it the right way. And then on top of that, no one has this, the international experience that Nikki Haley brings to the table. And last time I checked, we got some really serious international issues going. And where she is on those policies, putting America first and making sure that we bring a, a world peace to America's strength – that's exactly what she brings. So it isn't just that kind of likability, which is it goes, you know, is spoken for itself. Uh, it's that resume, that background, and then what she's doing on the ground here in New Hampshire. It's a full package that folks can get excited about. It's Governor Chris Noonan and Nikki Haley with us in studio as well. Of course, Governor Noonan endorsing uh, Ambassador Haley. Yes, I want to get to a couple of those international issues. As Joe Biden behind closed doors uh, signaled that Israel needs to change uh, its strategy when it comes to um, their engagement with Hamas in Gaza. Do you agree that there needs to be a change in strategy, uh, given you know what Americans are seeing on a consistent basis in Gaza, or uh, should uh, Bibi Netanyahu and Israel do as they wish in this instance? This is the frustrating part. I think Biden said all the right things. You know, when Israel was first hit, but this is like what I saw at the United Nations so many times. Everybody runs to Israel when she's hit, but then everybody criticizes her when she hits back. And it is not Biden's place or America's place to tell Israel how to win. Netanyahu and his team know how to do this. We just need to be supportive. We just need to let them do what they need to do. And what they need to do is eliminate Hamas. We all feel for the people in Gaza. We all should. That's what civilized countries do. But the best way to help the people in Gaza is to eliminate Hamas. They have lived in a terrible situation for so long because of Hamas. And this is a terrorist organization that has said when they get the chance, they're going to do this to Israel again. If this had happened to America, do you not think we would be doing everything we can? And this should be personal to us. They butchered 33 Americans. They have American hostages right now. And so for Biden, this is exactly what he did to Ukraine. He goes and he gives just a little bit so that they don't lose. But he forgets you're supposed to be helping them win, not just not lose. If he had done what Ukraine needed in the very beginning and gotten the allies together, this war would have been over already. And now he's doing the same thing with Israel. He's trying to micromanage it. That's not what he needs to be doing. We need to let Israel win, get out of their way. They will do it. They'll do it faster if Biden stays quiet. It also seemed to just about everybody that um, this was the the tact uh, that Israel was going to take. And this was the trajectory of this conflict. And for him to you know, realize now, uh, after two months, that this is how Israel was going to engage and now suddenly, you know, um, change his view of things reeks of politics to me. And he's feeling, you know, pressure. And initially he was credited for you know, doing the right thing and not heeding to the pressure within his party. But I feel like at this point in time, he's just hearing it so much that he's changing his policies and Americans policies potentially as a result of pressure. Do you feel that? And he's missing the major point. Israel is the tip of the spear when it comes to defeating terrorism. Israel's not just doing this for Israel. Israel's doing this for America. Because when they went and beheaded those people and burned those babies alive and raped those girls and dragged their naked bodies through the street of Gaza, what were they saying? Death to Israel, death to America. When they go and defeat Hamas, that's defeating Iran. 
Iran has always wanted to destroy us and use their proxies to do it. Biden needs to realize this helps America if Israel wins. You've been called a neocon, a warmonger, the same things that John McCain <laughs> were, was called as well, despite the fact that he was in prison for five and a half years and an understanding of um, of war unlike anybody else. Obviously, your, your husband uh, serves in the, the National Guard. Um, tell us why you would take things in a different direction. You mentioned ending wars, bringing peace, and uh, and that type of an approach. Um, why would you not perpetuate war the way that's being described by some of your opponents? I mean, look, those are labels that my opponents say, but the reality is they don't have the foreign policy experience, so they don't understand the fact that what I'm trying to do is prevent wars. We don't want to be in any more wars than we have to. We That should be the number one goal is to prevent wars. If my husband's in the military, the last thing I want him to do is to go fight in a war. But in order to prevent wars, you have to have the backs of your friends. You know, if... Ukraine wins, China doesn't go and invade Taiwan. If Ukraine loses, Russia's made it very clear that Poland and the Baltics are next. That puts America at war. We don't want that. We have to prevent that. When you look at Israel, if Israel wins, that prevents us from going to war with Iran. This is all about prevention. If you do the work on the front end, you have no war on the back end. But if you're going to be there, Be there completely so they can win. Don't just be there enough so that they don't lose. And that's the part that I think Biden has missed. And let's not forget, none of this had to happen had we not had that debacle in Afghanistan. Everybody saw weakness. None of this would have happened if Biden would have dealt with Russia surrounding Ukraine a whole year before they did it. None of this would have happened had he gone and kept his word with Israel and said, "Okay, we're going to support you. No conditions. But Biden continues to drag these wars out. That's what we don't want. Final thing, uh, Governor Sununum, and what does your support look like here over the next six weeks? Is this all in, all events, all Unrelenting. Unrelenting. It's going to be fun. Look, yeah. I'm taking this as a six-week campaign because, yeah, it's not for me, but it really is for this country. And I think New Hampshire has just too good of an opportunity to get this country unified, to get this party unified, to get people thinking positive and optimistically and energetically and get out of these doldrums, this malaise of, of the self-hatred in America we see and all that. Bring Leadership can cure all that. It doesn't happen with going with the same old with the same two guys nobody wants. Um, with all due respect to the former president, I mean, you've heard him on, on doing on the speeches. He's 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 lost his fastball, man. I mean, um, that's the nicest way I can say it. He mumbles on for ninety minutes about God knows what. So again, thank you for your service in sixteen and twenty. We don't need distractions and chaos. We have great candidates. Maybe we could fall back on him if we didn't have these incredible candidates. But great candidates, and one is truly emerging, and that's Nikki Haley to really galvanize everything together. I yeah, you you mentioned Nikki, you've been called a neocon and a warmonger i think this morning the democrat party called us maga extremists you know yeah, a couple yeah. magas you're also yeah, democrats yeah, too. We're, we're democrats and we're nice Bro, that's it's just, very confusing that's just the point right that's Everyone, when you know you're winning yeah that's, that's right. when you know the momentum's they, building and they're scared and they're, they're on the defensive so this is an awesome awesome opportunity for new hampshire so uh it's going to be a, a really really fun 40 days go to nikkihaley.com and join us great to see both of you i am chris ryan this is new hampshire today